Hey guys, how's it going? Um, it's me. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's been a while since I've done any real lesson video. Um, pretty much since my camera got stolen, I haven't really done one. Um, but I decided it's probably something good to get back into. Uh, the few people that I felt watched them did actually enjoy them. I got some good feedback on them, so I might as well kick back up into that until I leave for New York in a few weeks. Um, in which case, there'll be a whole slew of videos, and, you know, I'll be in essentially a real makeshift studio instead of just my room. Um, for today, what I want to do is... Um, talk a little bit more about um, a jazz approach. Now, I get a lot of questions about jazz and um, my jazz that I put into my playing and videos. I really don't have a lot of jazz videos up. Um, I bring it up kind of often, but a lot of the videos, like the eight string stuff, really isn't, I wouldn't consider that jazz, it's just clean chordal stuff. Um, there are a few videos I have on there, like the Just Friends video. Um, and I am really big into jazz, but usually if I was to approach doing jazz, I'd want to put it in a context with, say, another drummer, bass player, and a horn player. But, anyway, that's besides the fact. Uh, I'm going to cover two things uh, on this lesson. First one is going to be a very uh, common jazz progression. Now, if you've gotten into jazz at all, or just getting into jazz, I'm sure you've heard of a 2-5-1 before. Um, we're going to do a slightly different progression called a 1-6-2-5, which... If you understand what 251 is, you obviously understand what a 1625 is. It's just first, sixth, or yeah, first, sixth, second, and then fifth of the key that you're in. Um, I'm not going to mess with chord substitutions right now because that'll make this 10 minute video an hour and a half long. We're just going to go straight ahead and play the chords that are going to be involved. Um, and we're going to do this in the key of C because it seems to be the easiest key to demonstrate stuff in. So, the progression is going to sound like this. Alright, <clears throat> I'll run through the chords real quick. Um, this first one's C major 7, or any C major chord you do, major 7, major 6, um, you know, whatever you feel like doing. but doing a major 7, um, it's a very common chord shape, and uh, I'm on my AFJ 957, I'm not going to use this bottom string at all right now, I'm just using this guitar for the context, because I love playing it, it doesn't get enough love, but uh, normally I would use that bottom string for most of these root 5 chords, um, but we're just going to ignore this, pretend that's not there, um, so we're starting on the A string, we're playing um, in the order of the key, we're going 1st, 5th, 7th, and then 3rd. Fret-wise, um, you're looking 3rd fret on the A string, 5th fret on the D, 4th fret on the G, 5th fret on the B. And I do a little walk-up from 4 to 5 on the E string. Then we go to this dominant 13 chord, it's A dominant 13, um, which I'm looking 5th fret on the low E string, 5th fret on D, 6th on G, 7th on B. Um, now getting into that, I'm not going to, again, I'm trying not to go too in-depth on a lot of this stuff for time's sake. Uh, but for guitar, a lot of big extended chords, you really can't play the whole thing, so you kind of pick and choose, um, theoretically, which notes you're going to play. Um, and for that chord in particular, I'm playing first, obviously my root note, um, flatted 7 or minor 7, major third, and then 13. I usually use that, usually the two shapes I'll use for a dominant chord at any point in time are doing the dominant 13 or the dominant 7. Um, so I've got that 13 on A there. I'm going to do a little walk down from 6 to 5 on the A string. I'm going to do a dominant 7 chord on there, which is going to be a D dominant 7. Again, you're playing 1, 5, 7, 3. Or fret-wise, you're playing 5th fret on the A string, 7th fret on the G, 5th fret on the G string, 7th fret on the B. So you got it. And then again, walk down from 4 to 3 on your uh, E 
string. Another dominant 13 chord, same shape, so you're doing 3 on E, 3 on D, 4 on G, and 5 on B. And then for the little turnaround, all I do is drop that 13th down. And it becomes a normal dominant 7 there. So, uh, again, our progression, this is what it should look like if you're playing along. section, um, I'm going to start getting into the idea of <clears throat> out of key or dissonant, like diminished soloing. Uh, you're utilizing that sound, that outside kind of sound, um, without really applying any of the theory that would normally be used in it. Um, this is going to be hard, and this will probably piss off a lot of jazz purists, um, but this is for guitar players, like straight ahead guitar players that might know you know, like your pentatonic scales, stuff like that, basic ideas, um, that you want to start getting that I that sound into your playing. Um, now the way of approaching this, I'm not encouraging you not to learn the theory. If you're going to get into jazz guitar or fusion guitar or anything like that, where you're doing a lot of weird soloing over diminished chords or um, anything like that, I highly suggest you get into the theory aspect of it. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm going to explain these in terms of just guitar player shapes pretty much. And the reason I'm doing this is so while you're getting through or starting to get into like the theory of, of like how the diminished scale works with other chords and stuff like that, that you at least have something, an idea to, that, you can, that you can apply essentially while you're still learning or while you're getting into the idea, a way to apply it as a guitar player until you get to that mindset where it's just second nature um, as an improvisational skill. Um, so we'll take a look at the first, first lick I'll show you guys real quick and then I'll break it down. Move there. So five, seven, 
five on the D string. Then you're going to go down one fret, and now we're back out of the key again. So you're doing four, five on the D string, and then four, seven, and then six, which again, you're going to hit out of the key again. But again, we're using a musical idea. It sounds like it fits in there. Um, then up to the B string again, you're doing five, eight, and then... Um, to finish it off, five, six, seven, six, five on the E, and then back to eight where you're resolving on the B string. So yeah. That's the riff, and now you're starting to get the idea of getting into a riff that's utilizing outside or out of key notes in a musical sense, the biggest part is making it sound like you're conveying a point when you're playing. You don't want to bring a bunch of emphasis that you're hitting a note that's not in the key. Um, so let's take a look at another one that's a little bit more in depth. It actually uses a little bit of a jazz idea. So five on the E string, five on the G, and then seven on the D string. I just moved that down one fret. So you're doing four, four, and six. And then slide it into the key, just the one fret. So you get and there you do the same little um, hybrid idea we had on the last one. So five or seven, eight, ten, seven, eight on the G string, ten on the B, and then back down. 8, 7, 5, and then just straight down the pentatonic scale. Just doing 7, 5, 7, 5, 8 on the low E. But now instead of pulling off to what would normally be your root, or that 5th fret, you're going to have your pointer finger waiting at the 4th fret instead. So you got, again, you're out of key a little bit there. And then we're going to do that little blues run. If you're familiar with the blues scale at all, where you're just utilizing that flatted fifth note, that disgusting tritone kind of sound. Um, so we're doing pull off. So we got in key, out of key, in key, out of key, in key. Um, fret wise, A4 on the E string, and then on A5, 6, 7. And then we're just going to do a little shape where it's just like a major second, major third. So we're doing. So we're doing. Five, seven, nine on the D. Seven, nine, eleven on the G string. Um, and then you're going to go up to your B string. And this is where we get into uh, Honeysuckle Rose, which is a common jazz lick, essentially, um, over a progression like this. That's essentially the honeysuckle rose. And we're doing this again. We're in the key of C, so we're looking at. I'm look, I would look at this as a C major. Um, so that little riff, the way we're playing that, starting on the 12th fret of the B string, 12 to 10 on the B, and then chromatic 12, 11, 10 on the G string. So doing 12 on A, uh, 10 on D, 9 on G, so then 12 on D, 9 on G, then 10 to 12 on D, and then 9 on D. So you got little 
whole thing is 9 on the B string, 10 on the G, and sliding up to 12. And this is where we're ending it off, is just kind of a little box shape. That last little thing, that's the same, same notes as your blues, um, your flatted fifth there. progression that, that one six two five if you don't have any way to record it or loop it hit me up and I'll send you this one it's pretty simple you just keep looping the thing um, but keep playing over it and mess around with getting the theory of side of it down but while you're learning think about stuff in that context just in pentatonics like okay where does this where do my off notes sound musical And I apologize because I guarantee there's going to be a lot of jazz peers that are all pissed off and you can't combine this into whatever. Um, it's just music. I'm not saying that to, to demean what music is, but it's all opinion. And if that's how you want to think about it, then go for it. If that helps you convey the point you're trying to get across musically, go for it. You don't need any theory behind what you're doing if that's what makes you comfortable. Um, the only reason I get into that stuff is because I like it. Um, I get a kick out of knowing why a chord is which chord and stuff like that. Um, and getting into the big, gorgeous chords like that. Um, but you don't have to. And the biggest argument in guitar playing history, so we're not even going to touch on that. But use those riffs if you are going to start getting into diminished theory over um, jazz or fusion playing. Um, use that just so while you're trying to learn and you start getting pissed off because you don't understand it or you can't make it sound good, use riffs like that or just come up with stuff that just sounds like it fits. You don't have to know why it, why it sounds good. Just make something that sounds good. But I hope that helps somebody out there. Uh, I wish somebody would have showed me that a while ago. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a good day.